Hey there. So I've got this uh, Mercury Verado 225 engine. I've been having some issues with it where uh, when I would start the engine, uh, it would start to rev really high, too high for me to shift it into a gear. And this would happen in a cold engine, cold start. It would also happen you know, with a warm engine if I'm out on the bay, maybe picking up a water skier or something. And um, it was erratic. It would happen once in a while, not very often, but it would happen. And uh, sometimes uh, after using the engine for a bit, um, it seemed to be a little more pronounced. So I talked to my Verado tech. He was a little bit baffled about it and uh, really we're just kind of at our wits end as to what was really causing this uh, but thanks to the internet I uh, was able to kind of uh, figure it all out. Uh, there's really two options as to what it possibly can be and the main culprit is uh, this throttle body isolator right here so this thing right here is a pretty old part um, it was obviously reconditioned to a new design but if you can get if I can get in here you can see you push it and it's basically splitting off of the aluminum base that it's uh, that it's glued to um, and they've come up with a better design now which is basically this design where the rubber goes all the way around the, the base um, so that there's no chance of splitting and letting air in because I think what's happening is the air is getting in and confusing the sensors within the throttle that there's too much air um, and that it needs to rev higher because of the air um, that's my understanding of it um, but if I am to easily replace this part by removing a couple of clamps, I should be able to um, replace this part and, and alleviate some of the problems. Other things that people have told me is that this one right here, which is the map sensor, um, this thing right here has a little gasket and this gasket can go bad too and uh, cause too much air to go in. And that obviously is right next to the sensor. So the sensor is detecting way too much air as well. But this one looks pretty good. So I don't need to replace that as far as I know. I just need to replace this one right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna re remove this clamp right here. And I am going to remove this clamp right here. And this whole unit should come out. I'm also gonna have to remove two bolts down in here that are holding the cowling base um, right here. And this will enable me to move this so that this whole thing can come out. Um, previous videos I've seen, um, some other clamps were removed. One's back here and one here to get the whole thing out. Um, apparently you don't really need to do that, so that's my plan. So I'm gonna put the phone down and start removing some clamps and I'll take interim shots. First step is to remove this um, connection. There's also a connection down here. I remove that one as well. So that's both of those are removed. Now I can start to remove the clamp. Okay, so I've removed the clamps and I was able to remove this. Now the whole unit is out. Um, I had to pull this back so that uh, so that I could get uh, this whole thing out. And now I'm able to access the nuts that are here um, to remove this part that is now. It's now here, so I'm going to now remove that part. Okay, so I got the part removed. There was one more sensor that I needed to disconnect right there on that black stem. So I need to now remove these four bolts. One, two, three, four, and this thing will come out and we'll replace it with the new one. As I'm taking this off, you can see how it's split from the base and that's letting air in, making a hissing noise. And that also confuses the throttle to as to how much, uh, how much air is getting into the system. Um, so this is the problem with this. It's gotta be replaced. So since I opted not to pop this clamp and this clamp, which are not traditional screw off clamps, they're like, they're like put on with some special tool. Um, I can't remove this and this, this, uh, this nut is kind of behind this part. So I'm using a, an open ended wrench to kind of get in here and slowly do this. So it's kind of a pain in the neck. You could of course pop these and then just replace them, but I'm choosing not to, cause I think I only have one around right now. So I'm slowly working this off and this is almost off completely and I can just replace it. So now that I've gotten the part off, you can see here where it was splitting and the air was getting in. So this was really the core problem, and it's probably uh, here as well. Let's see. And not as bad, but um, maybe on this side. Yeah, but it's definitely it was definitely coming on this side. This was probably the main the main culprit, and uh, I didn't really check to see which side it was, but I'm wondering whether or not it's something related to heat. But either way, the new part should uh, really fix this. All right, so the new part's on, all screwed on, all around. Um, got the bolts on, and we're going to replace now. Place it back into the cavity of the engine. Um, should be pretty straightforward. Okay, so I got everything back in. 
The new part is there. Screws to replace, put this back is in, back in place. This screw, this, this uh, clamp, um, and all the uh, connectors, there are three. There's one on the actual throttle, and there's one down there, and there's one here. So everything's back together. Started up pretty nicely, and uh, let's hope let's hope it doesn't have any issues. Uh, I know that um, it's very erratic when it when it does happen. Um, it could happen at any given time. Um, if you hear hissing coming from your engine, most likely it's that part um, that's letting air in or sucking air in, um, and you don't want that air going in there. So I'm gonna put the cowling back on and take it for a little bit of a bait test. Thanks, everyone.